Welcome to the BioVentus HealthCast, episode number 503. Atrial fibrillation is an electrical short in the heart. BioVentus Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, medical director of BioVentus Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So we do a lot of talking at BioBalance Health about heart conditions as a sidebar concern for the aging process. We first start to talk about it when we talk about ED issues, and we've done a number of podcasts relative to those for men as they age who start to have erectile dysfunctions, and they want to do something about it. But what we have discovered, what science and medicine have discovered, is that we need to be aware that the onset of those kinds of issues in an aging man is a five-year early warning design for heart problems and circulatory problems. If you're having blood flow problems in your penis, five years out, you're going to have blood flow problems throughout your body. So, And that's a general rule. So you and your doctors both need to know that and check into it. So as, as Kathy mentioned last week in the promo for this episode, most people, when they think about heart problems, they think about what we essentially would define as a plumbing problem. Something gets clogged, clog has to be broken, something stops flowing through, you have to take it out and clean it out and, and reattach it, put, put a new valve in, something like that, just to make the blood flow properly. Mm-hmm. But there's an entirely different kind of heart problem that we don't often talk about, and, men, and, and I certainly don't understand. I'm way over my head with this stuff. <laughs> but it's called atrial fibrillation. So you need to know what the atrium is and why that matters as a part of the heart. You need to know what a fibrillation is, what causes that, and why that's damaging to you, mm-hmm. and, and what all the interconnected parts that work together make your heart work. So I'm going to explain. So you're that. Uh, one, one hopes. I'm going. I'm going. And to I'm the tr- one that hopes. I'm going to. Tr- I'm going to try. I'm going to try to uh, translate um, what is usually medical talk into okay normal conversation. So, right. so your heart, besides being a pump for your blood, which is fed by blood vessels that that need to be clear and can be damaged by atherosclerosis also has another amazing feature that makes it go. Basically, it has a generator that is a little piece of special tissue that actually generates a heartbeat. So when when we're in the womb, this little piece of tissue called the SA node is in the top part of your heart, your heart's atrium and then ventricles. The atrium is where the blood comes into first before it goes into the big pump, which is the ventricle. In the atrium, there's this little piece of tissue and it makes the heart beat starting, I mean, we see it at eight weeks, six weeks in in, uh, fetuses inside the the womb. So it really is an amazing tissue and it's spontaneous, automatic. It's an automatic heart rate as long as we're alive. But there are things that make that heart rate go faster or slower. So if it's part of the, if it's automatic, is that part of the autonomic nervous system? It's controlled by the autonomic nervous system, but okay. it's actually a, um, a tissue of its own. It's okay. there's nothing it's else. Independent. Nothing else really like it in the human body that just keeps beating our whole life. Mm-hmm. When you're and awake or asleep, it doesn't matter, just night and day, every right. day. And it's automatic. You don't have to think about it. You can't make, I mean, there are some people who can meditate and make it slow down or make it fa- speed up. Right. But there are things in our environment that make it go faster or speed, or drugs that make it go slower or faster. There are things we eat that make it go faster or slower. That sometimes occurs with the effect of those things on the adrenal glands. So if you get upset and you need to run fast and, and, and like we were built for running away from whatever the lion or whatever that was chasing us, then our adrenals sends out epinephrine. Epinephrine is, I mean, as a drug, it's like cocaine. It speeds up your heart rate or it's, or it's like, um, 
any other like diet pills, they speed up your heart rate. Okay. So it's that type of a of, of a chemical that your body puts out to make your heart beat harder and actually more efficiently, but also faster. So if you're scared or if you're stressed, that little SA node gets bombarded with a chemical, which then makes it its its heart rate faster. So it's like a motor that has an attachment that surges it to for short short term to higher power. Higher right, output. but it's a chem- but it's a chemical. But it's a chemical it's, surge. It's a liquid surge. Okay. Or it's a liquid effect. But you also have two parts of the autonomic, meaning automatic, nervous right. system. Right. That comes from your brain down your spine and goes out to all different organs. The main autonomic nervous system nerve that uh, affects the heart and the gut is the vagus nerve. It comes from the right side of your brain, comes down, goes inside here, and then crosses over to the heart and attaches the SA node and stimulates it to go faster or slower. Now, the vagus, when it's working, slows the heart down. Okay. But there are other things that speed the heart up, other parts of other nerves that speed the heart up. So you want the vagus nerve to be intact and to calm the heart down. It's the brakes. Okay. And then there's another part of the central nervous system, which is, or the autonomic nervous system, which is the sympathetic system, and it speeds it up. So not only do you have a chemical stimulation, just like an, uh, when you used to drive a stick shift car, you had a clutch and a brake mm-hmm. and an accelerator. Mm-hmm. You had to go back right. and forth among all of them. Right. But your body does that automatically. Automatically, you don't have to think about it. As your brain it. perceives the need. Right. Okay. So, so that's all well and good. It works mm-hmm. beautifully until we get to. Uh, we usually have a genetic defect that makes us more susceptible to this. So we see it in our family history where we have arrhythmias. People who have either had a slow arrhythmia, that means their stimulation wasn't working anymore. They couldn't speed up their heart. So Mm -hmm. it's really slow. That's a bradycardia. They need a pacemaker for that. You need a pacemaker, which is just like that SA note, only it's, it's it's a box that has wires to your heart and it stimulates it stimulates your It does the same heartbeat. thing. It or, does or, a, or does it do it instead of? It does it instead of. Okay. So uh, so that's that's what happens when you have a slow heart rate. What we're talking about today is harder in some ways and easier in others, but it, it's a fast heart rate. It's a heart rate that is so fast that you skip beats and and you you have runs of really fast heart rate, like 200 a minute, and then... Then it sl- and it slows down to normal. So it can be all the time. It can be paroxysmal, which means periodically you get this heart rate. Right. So that can be from a short circuit in this parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So it's like a trumpet player that does double tonguing, tonguing or triple tonguing. Sometimes it just pop, 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 pop faster right. than it's supposed to. Right. And the reason that's a problem right. is because the heart has to f- have time to fill the atrium you know, that lub-dub, lub-dub that you can hear through a stethoscope or if you have your head on somebody's chest, it's lub-dub. Well, the lub is the atrium squeezing blood from the top of the heart, and the dub is the bottom of the heart squeezing the blood that was just squirted in there. So because it's a closed system, the blood flow from the body comes back to the top of the heart, fills that chamber. Yeah, the small then chamber. Then the bottom chamber empties and reopens, and, and then, the top chamber has to drain into it. And your valve opens and pushes it in. And, th- and then the bottom chamber pushes it back out into the body, to it the pushes, lungs, so it picks up goes oxygen. Goes to the lungs, get oxygen. And then goes all the way back, back and comes back at the top. To the other part, yeah. the other top part of your heart, which is your left atrium. Oh, it's atrium. a back back. A- yeah. Okay. So you go into the left atrial area. It fills that up. And then the largest part, your left side of your heart, is the biggest pump. And it takes oxygenated blood from that atrium down into the ventricle and then squeezes it out to the rest of your body through okay. the a- aorta. All right. So that's how the heart works. Right. And, but it has the SA node as its regulator. primary yeah. regulator of rate of how fast it does it. If you go too fast, no blood can get out of that atrium into the ventricle and back out to the lungs. You get a shorter breath. You can't get oxygen to the lungs and then back to 
the rest of your body. Okay. So that's why atrial fibrillation, which is just your heart just doing this and not able to push blood. So is that painful? Are you getting pain spasms or is it just you can't breathe and you get panicky? I mean, what's that like? so So the reason I chose this is because until I had it, I didn't really... Understand it. <laughs> understand it as much as I should have as a physician. Uh, but uh, I've had it for quite a while, but it's been, but when it gets out of kilter, when, you're, when your drugs don't control it, mm -hmm. then you have to, you think about all the things that affect it. So, so basically, you feel really tired because you're not getting enough oxygen to your body. Tired breeds depression, breeds not being able to, you know, function very well. And then you also have this feeling of palpitations, like fear, like anxiety. It feels like you're anxious, but there's no reason for you to be anxious. Yeah. So it feels like that. And then you feel these, when you feel like there's no heart rate, like it goes, and then nothing, that feels like you, your whole chest filled up with something. It's really weird. It's a really weird feeling. So the symptoms and then that you short of have breath. listed are like short of breath, dizzy, chest pain. Mm -hmm. people, uh, some people can, this can be so bad that they, it can't, it limits the amount of blood in the vessels to the heart and it can't get enough blood, even if the vessels are open, it can't get enough blood to the muscle so they get chest pain. Okay. And I have never had that. But, um, but they can get dizzy because they don't get enough blood to their aren't brain. Full of uh, plaque. Well, know. that's that's what the one. Flow is that's one reason, and I just don't think that it's gotten at that severe. Mine's still off and on. It isn't okay. all the time, and it isn't so, so severe that I can't control it with medicine and diet and exercise. Before we had this conversation, and you told me what you wanted us to talk about, mm -hmm. and I started reading some materials mm -hmm. and trying to get ready for the conversation, I remembered that I had an elderly gentleman friend who had this and was so bad that he went to the hospital and they stopped his heart electrically mm -hmm. and restarted it mm -hmm. uh, because he couldn't catch his breath. He mm -hmm. was dizzy. He was mm -hmm. weak. And it was atrial fibrillation mm -hmm. was the term they used. Mm -hmm. Is that a common thing? Is that's, that, that's, one of, that's one of the things that they can do for this. I is, think they is, put a pacemaker in after and that. Then they, and then first. they put a pacemaker in. So that's one of the ways we used to do it. Now mm -hmm. they have a, an ability to find out where the fast heart rate's coming from, because sometimes, in general, it's not just the SA node that's going really fast all on its own. It's another ectopic or another piece of tissue that acts like the SA node, and it's somewhere else in the heart. So they, they then can go and get rid of that abnormal source. They call it an ablation. Okay. They go through the they go through the groin. Uh -huh. They put it up through through your um, veins. So there's a cluster of heart. cells in the heart that are acting out in some way. I mean, they can artists. identify those. Yes, and, and they, they can just ablate them. Yes, and a cardiac physiologist is the person who does that, and they can tell where it is, and then they can watch it, and they can find it, and they can get rid of that. I can't do that right. because mine is in my SA node. It's in it's within the tissue that has my heartbeat. Right. So if I did that, then I run the risk of not having a heartbeat at all right. and then having to have a pacemaker. Well, that would be the end game if nothing else works. Right. So, so you try other things first. So you try other things first. None of this is related to hormones, by the way. <laughs> right. This is a completely non-hormonal issue, and it has to do with genetics. My mother had a pacemaker, and it also has to do with the fact that I overstressed myself my whole life. I, by staying up for 36 hours regularly at a time and not sleeping and not eating properly and not and always being in a state of of hysteria because I was always waiting for somebody to deliver a baby and run to the hospital and then you know you have to manage all of these complications without ever changing your face. You can never let anyone know that you're yeah. that there's something you can't go, wrong. Oh crap! No, and, 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 and you yeah. can never you have to suppress all that. Well, that stimulate overstimulates your adrenal gland over time, and it makes you have too much adrenaline all the time. So the problem is essentially genetic. Mm -hmm. That then lifestyle issues cause mm -hmm. uh, an increase in the in the difficulty and, right. and lead to the mm -hmm. se more severe mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about habits and situations that mm -hmm. make it worse if you genetically are predisposed for it. Mm -hmm. And so these things don't cause it per se, but they contribute to it if, you, yes. if the condition exists. Right. And there are things like excess caffeine, alcohol, 
a fatty diet, high and sugar, sugar content, mm -hmm. dehydration, heat, cold, hypoglycemia, high altitude, aerobic exercise, tight neck muscles and headaches, lack of sleep. All of those All of things those. contribute. And so if you have a cluster of those things, mm -hmm. which what which you're I describing. Which I have tons of them. Yeah, you had most of them. So, uh, yeah, I lived on caffeine. I mean, and now I can't have more than a cup in the yeah. morning and maybe a half a cup in the afternoon. And then I'm if I do more than that, it affects me. If I have alcohol, I'm not able to drink really anymore, which is fine. I mean, I never drank much, but... But I can't have wine because it, it makes it happen again. Yeah. And um, I don't eat a fatty diet, and I tend not to eat sugar. But if I do eat something like dessert, then it makes it worse. So you're talking about serious lifestyle changes. Yeah. And I mean, you This have gets to, to the point where you're looking at medical interventions. You try the lifestyle changes mm -hmm. first as the mm -hmm. primary behavior. Mm -hmm. And there are things like increase your sleep, or get regular sleep, mm -hmm. avoid alcohol uh, and caffeine, take up meditation or yoga mm -hmm. if you can do mm -hmm. those to a positive mm -hmm. gain. Stop stressful work activities. Well, that, that should be real easy for you, right? Well, my, my work activities are not like they used to be, thankfully. I mean, I don't know that I could have continued. I, I couldn't. This got so bad that that was one of the factors in my it not delivering babies anymore. made you decide to stop doing anymore. surgeries and delivering babies. Right. right, because this got worse every time I ran to the hospital. Well, or, it would be so irresponsible to have a heart attack while you're trying to deliver somebody's baby. I know, baby. I know. I mean, that would be abandoning <laughs> They'd be looking her. over like, what happened to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. And that's... <laughs> That's one of the other, you know, that's the other issue is you don't want to be out of breath while you're trying to, yeah. you know, deliver a baby. But there, you know, there were other factors like the hospital had us park in the lower 40 and we'd have to run in and right. I'd be jogging right. in and that made it worse. Because so. well, you weren't the high volume income producer. No, so we weren't the hard surgeons. You got to park surgeons. further away. Yeah, yeah, we parked way far away all day and night. So uh, that was that was an issue. That didn't happen in the beginning of my practice, but it happened by the end. So, and then you say there are supplements that you can take to your diet mm -hmm. that also can help control this or reduce the severity of it? Right. So, so one of them is magnesium. Magnesium is a muscle relaxant and it's a blood pressure lower. Okay. It's very important. And it, and it, because of the muscle relaxant, it stops the, the pain that you get from muscles, tense muscles that is right magnesium. around. Yeah, magnesium. And it's right around your vagus nerve where it comes out of your skull. So if you get a muscle spasm there, I've actually had it injected and my heart rate fell down fell down to 70 from wow. 90. So, I mean, it does work to get rid of that spasm. So, okay. so magnesium is a muscle relaxant. Potassium is actually helpful for your muscles to work right. Um, you can eat tomatoes, so I, bananas, I knew, oranges, I knew bananas, but I know these other avocados. things that are sources of potassium. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, and potato skins. Potato skins, tomatoes, oranges, and avocados. Right. Okay. That's amazing. I mean, our food, you can treat some things with food. Mine, yeah. If you get it as bad as I have it, that's not going to be your first choice. You're going to be on a well, medication to right. help stop this. But these are things that I also do. All right. CoQ10 is, is um, really necessary for cholesterol metabolism, and that also helps your heart, basically. I mean, it, it helps anything that has to do with heart function. So does ribose. D-ribose is something, is a sugar that isn't really sweet, but it does help your, your heart and decreases your arrhythmias. So it's like a scoop of that in your coffee. You can't really taste it. It's not sweet. Okay. But, I mean, it doesn't taste sweet to me. Yeah. L-carnitine is a protein, and a protein that does help the heart function at a, a more uh, efficient way. So, so. You, you have the Sinatra foursome. Well, That's what they call it. CoQ10, D-ribose, L-arginine, which I've, or excuse me, L-carnitine, and magnesium. Maybe because it's a cocktail. Yes. It's a mix of several of these things. <laughs> I guess that's why I didn't ever I ask why it was yeah. called that, but it's called this, it may be a Dr. Sinatra too. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So, so then, so those are the things you can do. And then the things that your doctor will offer are beta blockers. Beta blockers are pill, are medications that will block the effect of the stimulation. The adrenaline surge. Yeah. They keep your heart from going zoom, boom. And right. So they, they medicate you so that even if you get frightened, you can't surge. Yeah. Or if you're exercising, you can't surge. So okay. that's a problem in itself When for me to do aerobic exercise. Well, it also affects sex. It's really. If you're on beta does blockers. I, I've been it does told. For men. I don't know. But it for does, men. But it does for men. It men does, with doesn't whom. for women. Okay. So it doesn't have any effect on that at all. But for men, it, it affects their erections. So. Yeah. 
we try to keep men off of beta blockers, but women are, are more likely to have a, um, a, an atrial fib than more likely than men. So luckily, so it doesn't seem to affect us. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I was just, I just no, I, uh, <laughs> I know, you I know, know that know from people other things who know, uh, who have taken beta blockers, mm -hmm. uh, and have talked to, about those problems, mm -hmm. but at, at any rate, what we want people to walk away from this conversation with is an understanding that heart related concerns are not just plumbing related concerns. It is possible to have electrical mechanical related concerns. There are better and better understandings about why these things happen and better and better interventions, but it's still a very serious concern. And so if you are genetically predisposed to this, mm -hmm. you and your physician should know it and you should take precautionary steps to avoid it to the degree that you can. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.